Happy holidays, it's Jonathan. And Tegan. We are so excited to have you and share some of our favorite recipes. I'm lucky enough to have Tegan here in my kitchen in West Hollywood. I'm so excited. So what are we making? What are your suggestions? So, like, what are your favorites? I love simplicity during the holidays. You gotta keep it simple, you gotta keep it bright, you gotta keep it colorful, right? Because we want it to look very festive. So I'm excited, we're gonna do my cranberry braised short ribs, they're braised with cranberries and red wine. They're beautiful and they're simple and they're just like a crowd pleaser. Slow cook, the whole Slow cook, so like bang. the house smells amazing. So like when your guests are walking in, it's like such a good inviting warming smell. I feel like holidays are all about like the smells in the house, the kitchen, the candles, like the flowers, exactly. it's just so. Exactly, you gotta create like a really, I feel like, you yeah. gotta create like a really warming, welcoming environment and it just makes it so much better. It's so much better. It's like the best, like just like being in a house, like even like childhood memories, like remembering those like smells and those scents and just if like the, the way it the feels. If the kitchen isn't moving during the holidays, like it's not, not the, the holidays. holidays. <laughs> so we've got my short ribs, which are just easy. You can't go wrong with the recipe. And then we're gonna do a really, really pretty shredded Brussels sprout and prosciutto salad with some pomegranates. We need some greens. We need some greens and we need some reds. Yes. You gotta bring in those jewels of the holidays. I know? love that. And I love when like the color themes like work through the food. I love how you do that with like the cranberry and even like the rosemaries and like all the beautiful, like the star of anise, which I made sure to like stock up in like a big he way. Got all I mean, of my favorites. All the things. I mean, all the things. How could I not? So, so let's I'm do it. So we have our short rib here. We're gonna season it, right, with salt and pepper. We're gonna season, all right, let's do this. You're gonna season it up with salt and pepper. We're gonna sear them in a super hot skillet. Is this right? Just get it all over there. Just season those babies up. Okay. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna sear them up in a skillet to get a nice browning on the short ribs before they go into the oven to slow cook for a few hours. It's gonna smell really delicious and they're gonna look really pretty because we're gonna get a nice browned topping on them. You're good. Okay. Let's throw these guys in the skillet. A little bit of broth and some tomato paste. Slow cooking, I love that. Slow cook this. It can go in the oven. Bye bye for a while. All right, so while we have our ribs in the oven, let's get the rest of this meal going, yeah? Yes. We're gonna do a salad and then then we've got your rice that I'm so excited about. I'm excited to show So this you. is my shredded Brussels sprout, prosciutto, pomegranate, avocado salad situation. I love, 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 love this during the holidays. It's so great, especially because the shredded Brussels sprouts and then like shredded kale, they really can like hold up so you can make this ahead of time, which is kind of key when you're entertaining. It's like try to get everything made ahead of time. So we crisp up some prosciutto in the oven. You can do this at like 350 on a baking sheet. Let it let it cook, get nice and crispy. That's delicious if you haven't done crispy prosciutto before. You. I've never done it before. This is like looks so delicious. You it's like take a bite. You've never done crispy prosciutto. Mmm. It's like better than bacon. Ooh. Wow. I wouldn't. I, I, I don't say that, Maybe, but I okay. love a little crispy prosciutto situation. In my opinion, <laughs> I like it better. Yes. But we, we don't, don't want we don't need to offend our bacon fans. Fans. Okay. All right. So we, and then we have a really really delicious shallot vinaigrette over here. Let's pour some of that over our greens and give it a toss. What I love to do, yeah, is really season up the greens for sure. Give it a toss. And I do this before. Here's the key to like making it look really pretty. I do this before adding everything else, so that your beautiful red pomegranates and your beautiful green avocado don't get like totally discolored in the process and, like and we, lost right right exactly so we've got it in the whole we'll but your greens are seasoned nobody wants to eat like a not dressed salad just put it all on sure just go for yeah. it sure. it's a really good vinaigrette too you guys everyone really enjoys this and then what i love to do is that this is where like it gets fun for me I feel like you're, oh, I love like watching you just like do all the little. 
the decorating of the food. Y'all, it takes me forever. <laughs> you have no idea. Okay. All right. So like, yeah, situate the greens and then let's go like this. How does that look? It looks beautiful. So I'm going to show you how I, how I do this up. So let's kind of spread them out in the bowl here. Make it look nice and plentiful, gorgeous. Leave our tongs in here because you want to make your salad look inviting. So I actually leave the tongs in the bowl. And I like to kind of put them on the side, just like this. Plump up our greens. Now we're gonna start with the, we're gonna start with the pomegranate. So here's what I, I kind of like to group it together so that the the pomegranates don't get lost in your salad. Instead of just like tossing them all up and then they all sink to the bottom, we don't want to do that. So we want to put them on top here, just like this. And you can really just kind of like bunch them together so they look really beautiful wow. right and then i usually go for the avocado and i sprinkle it all over you can never have enough avocado this looks so beautiful and then we'll do a little bit of cheese and i kind of do the cheese in between the pomegranates because you don't want to cover those fully up and then you can, of course, toss this right before you serve it so that everything kind of gets evenly mixed. But this is how it needs to like show up to the table or show up to I the... think so. Yeah, and I guys, agree. this isn't perfect. Like usually I spend quite a lot of time doing this. And then do you see the crispy prosciutto is a really nice, beautiful color. So we'll kind of like break it into smaller pieces and just kind of arrange it into our salad. And then you can top with some fresh herbs if you got them. I think thyme is really nice in this salad or a little bit of crispy sage would be really good. So beautiful. It's I can't believe I have this salad in my kitchen right now. All right, and I love to finish this off. A little bit of hazelnuts on top that I toasted up in some butter, which just makes them so delicious. And then a little sea salt. How pretty is that? Wow. Gorgeous. We are going to make a tachin with dill, crispy rice. It is a Persian rice. This is my aunt's recipe. And Love the that. trick is, is, this is my aunt's trick. I'm so it? excited. <laughs> it's a special um, cooking skillet. It's called Presto. <laughs> okay. This is, um, I'm not getting sponsored by Presto, sadly. But I we, know. we need a sponsorship. We're not getting one. It's okay. But you can get it on Amazon. It's $59. I use it for eggs sometimes. I can cook like bacon in it. It also looks like it'd be really useful during the holidays to keep dishes warm. Yeah. Like, like a potato casserole or... You can literally set it on warm. And the good thing about this too is that like it doesn't take up oven space or like countertop space if you're like needing to make like extra dishes. Absolutely and... key during the holidays. Because there's like, it's like a constant rotation in the oven. Like it's so worse. It's so hard. So it's this so is like, worse. this is where it's at. We so love this. So we'll put this aside for a second. Presto, Amazon. Okay. So the first thing is, is um, the key is the saffron. This saffron, you can get also on Amazon, but um, actually one of my really good friends brought this back from Iran. She was recently there. So this is like the best Aww. saffron you can get. It is so pretty. It's such a vibrant red color. The taste is amazing. So first thing is, is you really need to break it up. I like to like grind That's it. That's a lot of saffron. The saffron's the key. I love like, it. Like what is it, like a tablespoon? Um, yeah, it's probably like a tablespoon and a half of saffron. And you just have to really like it when you have to make sure that it's super dry so it doesn't stick so there's no like liquid um so make sure that your motor and pestle is like really dry and it really just breaks down and, and yeah it's a powder it becomes like a powder i've never ever done this so it's absolutely so gorgeous the, and the color is just like so bright vibrant another key ingredient to this rice is using the extra long grain basmati rice. Right. The trick is you have to really rinse it. I know you rinse your rice. I never <laughs> rinse my rice. So this is key because you need to get all the like starch off of it and um, it really helps it from like breaking down and sticking together. Okay. So you get really beautiful long separate pieces of rice. Okay. So it's all about like really rinsing it and letting it soak. So how this many times do you drain it? Probably like three or four times, and then I'll like even like let it sit for a little while. Uh -huh. But it's all about just getting it like really clear. You see how it's still like really milky? You have, we have starchy water, so we want pretty clear water. Yeah, so you just have to keep 
washing it through. So now what we're gonna do is, because we have the presto, we're gonna use this for the actual cooking of the rice, but we're gonna parboil the rice. Yeah. You really wanna make sure that you don't get it to cook too long because you don't want it to get too like mealy. Okay. So you really need to just bring okay. it to a quick boil. And then as you see them getting like long, you just take it off and strain it really quickly. Yeah, I've never ever made rice this way. So now this is basically a mixture that we're making. It's the saffron mixture that we I mix with the rice. Okay. So the first step is you take um, two cups of yogurt. This is Greek yogurt. My thing is I like using egg and yogurt. Okay. So I put two eggs. Okay. This is not your average rice. Not your average rice. This, wait till you see it. And then I put um, one third a cup of uh, vegetable oil or canola oil. Okay, could you use olive oil? I don't like using olive oil because sometimes it burns, okay. especially because you want to get this like all about like the rice getting crispy okay so sometimes it doesn't work as well with olive oil but i like to use either vegetable canola um so you mix this all up with a whisk and then we're gonna get some of this beautiful saffron that's been sitting here it's like really really beautiful and i also put some of this um, on the bottom of the pot with the oil so you want to use about i would say two-thirds of your mixture into the yogurt and the okay. egg and then you just mix it all together. Do you ever add any other seasonings to this? Um, so I'm gonna put salt, a little bit of salt in here, um, about like a tablespoon of salt, and I'll have all the breakdown of all the measurements. So this is the mix, you'll put that off to the side. Don't wear white when you make that. <laughs> no, and it stains the countertop, so you have to be careful. Yeah, so it's, it's a lot like turmeric then, yeah. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put uh, generously oil the bottom of this skillet. Do you always make this during the holidays or just like any time of year? Um, it's pretty like expected if you come to my house for dinner that you're gonna get this or some version. Love it. Yeah. Okay, I love it. So we put the oil at the bottom, make sure it's all covered. You have a signature. Yes, this is my signature. I need a signature, guys. You have so many. No, I know that's the problem, but you have like a signature. So then you take some of the leftover um, saffron and just drizzle it on the bottom of the skillet. This is gonna give you that really nice color on the bottom of the rice. Is that nice rice. like browning color? So yeah, it's like gold. You're, it's gonna come out, it's gonna be literally just like gold. Like this is, people call this liquid gold. This is literally uh, liquid I'm gold. I'm like so excited right now because <laughs> this is not really what I was thinking. Oh really? Not at all. Okay. And it's definitely not a process I've ever done. And then another thing I do is and I just I've done a lot. add a little bit of salt at the bottom so this crispy you gotta, rice. You gotta salt. You gotta you salt. You gotta salt. So we have this salt at the bottom here all over. And now we're gonna get our rice in our mixture. So the first thing is we're gonna put half of the rice into this bowl and we're going to pour the mixture, half of the mixture into the rice. It is so yellow. It's crazy, the color is crazy. The color is crazy. And then we're gonna gently, it's very important not to over mix because you don't wanna break the rice. Okay. Because you wanna keep these long grains really intact. So treat this like a... Very gentle. Be gentle with your rice. Yes. It is so yellow and so pretty. And then you're gonna create a layer, a base layer. I feel like you've done a dress in this color. This is like our um, Marig our what is it, goldenrod. It's on, uh, it's part of our pre-fall collection. It was inspired by uh, the saffron color. It's, wait, are you messing with me or are you kind being serious? Of, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I would, go, I would go with it. I would go with it. Yeah, so we layer this on all over the bottom like this. So you don't have to get it fully mixed. No, it's nice to have a little bit of like uneven. Uh-huh. Um, Cause if you over mix it, sometimes it gets too like broken. The pieces get too broken. Okay. So, so this is the first layer. Okay, and then we put it in like that. So then the next layer is we're gonna mix the second portion of it. And then for this layer, what I do is I take some fresh chopped dill and I put the dill all over so pretty. Like this. Do you ever do this with pomegranate? Pomegranate or whatever, even barberries, like the little. Oh, what are those? They're like these little small, they're kind of like pomegranates meets like a goji berry. Okay. Yeah. 
um, which is really I don't think I could get those in Colorado. No, but we can send them to you. Okay. We know someone. We know someone. <laughs> and then we can mix some in here for the top. I like to mix the green in the second layer. Um, because the first layer is the part that gets like the crispy one, uh -huh. I don't like to put the green so that it doesn't burn at the bottom. Oh, smart. Okay, okay. And then just mix this all up. How long does it cook for? Um, so the cooking is kind of critical because you want to brown the bottom. Here, so we have this here. All right, so we're going to turn this on. It's gonna, so we're going to uh, set the timer to be 400 the first 15 minutes, and we're going to turn it down to 300 and let it, or 250, and let it cook for another 45 minutes. The 15 minutes is key because you don't want to overcook the bottom, so it's like leaving it there for 15 minutes and turning it down. But Got um, it. Yeah, we're good. All right. So that's it. Is it time for a drink? I think it's time for a drink, for sure. <laughs> We've been working so hard. I'm like sweating we, over here. I know, you really are. <laughs> this is, like I said, my spicy pomegranate Paloma. So why don't you add, we've got a little bit of pomegranate juice. You can dump. We've got some pomegranate juice here. We made a really, really delicious simple syrup. I like to use honey for my simple syrups. It gives them a little bit more flavor and they're a little less sweet, which I really enjoy in a cocktail. So we're making a pitcher. You can use basically all of it if you want to like a sweet cocktail or a not so sweet cocktail. Perfect. All right, then we got some lime juice. And then we have a fresh grapefruit juice, which is really key to a Paloma. Paloma is typically grapefruit juice, a little bit of tequila, and then I always top mine with some some bubbles, like some sparkly water or- Ginger beer? Ginger beer. We know you love a ginger beer. Is the key. So we'll mix it up, add the tequila. You wanna add the tequila? Yes. And then I always top the drinks with the ginger beer because you don't want to like water the drink down. You don't want to lose any of that fizz either. Oh, he's like going for it. It is the holidays. You it know. is, you know. And you have this really, really, really gorgeous color. I mean, the too. color is amazing. It's Christmas in a jug. That's like another dress right there. What? That's another dress color right there. Oh my God. Yeah, this is a gorgeous holiday dress. Okay. Get so on that. I know. We got to get. Let me take a quick note. Hold on. Noted. Okay, so what I so I love cocktails. Like they're so fun during the holidays. My family really enjoys themselves a glass of tequila, anything. But I love to make them really festive, and I do that with usually on the rim. I'll do some kind of salt rim, some kind of sugar rim. So this is my kind of like spicy sweet rim. This is a little bit of sugar, a little bit of cinnamon, and a little bit of cayenne. You mix it all on a plate, and then grab yourself some lemon or wine wedges. And we have some wine glasses here. Rim the rim the edges around. Yeah, have you done this before? I've seen the bartenders do it. Okay, well I'm not a bartender. <laughs> so they probably have much better ways of doing this. But do you like having like it go like pour down a little bit like more? I always on make side. it very uneven. Uneven and just kinda like see what we'll get here. Sometimes it takes me a few tries. And then you just roll it through the sugar. You can do half of the rim, you can do the whole rim. And then when we pour that red glass, or when we pour the red drink in, it like looks like snow. It's so pretty, it sparkles. It's just festive and fun. This is as much snow we're gonna get here in LA. I'm from Colorado. <laughs> Make it snow. Okay, how's wow, that? Look at you did such a good job and mine's like wimpy. Love this. Well, if you need a, if you need help around the holidays, I will come and I he's like a pro. He said he needed my help, but he's got this cover and he definitely has the cocktail situation covered. So if you need help with someone He knows um, how to make a cocktail. Icing your glasses, I'm your man. So we got our ice Coming right up. Fill them up. All right, so I would go like three quarters of the way full. Okay. I love to use ginger beer. It is not traditional, but it adds a little spice, a little sweetness, and like ginger in a drink is just the, do you do ginger in drinks often? All the time. It's like a, it gives like a dark and stormy vibe. Exactly. But like a festive, it's like. And like with tequila. Yeah, delish. We love that. All right, so top, your, top these guys off. And also like, look at the pretty bubbles it adds. I love wow. it. And then you can throw in a cinnamon stick. I love to do some star and yeast because I just think these look like Christmas. You gotta get the whole star. And then I like to do like a festive green color. Yeah. 
little, you could do mint, rosemary, a little thyme. Look at these beauties. And now we have spicy pomegranate palomas. Do you love? Wow. Cheers. Cheers. Wow. It's good. Mmm. I love the rim too. It's so delicious. What do you think? <laughs> Amazing. The ginger beer for me is my favorite part. It's so good. This literally tastes it's a lot like of tequila. Christmas in a cup. Oh yeah. I like a lot of tequila. I, Sorry. I could tell. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in to watch Chicken and I cook our holiday meal. We had fun. Yes. I had fun. I had a great time. We Cheers. We need to do more holiday parties together There's officially. So much more to come. Cheers. Thanks for having me. Thanks for my look. Happy Putting holidays. Me in white. Happy holidays. <laughs>